motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Brandon, seconded by Mary Ellen. Those in favor, signify aye. 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 Okay. Uh, motion carries. Uh, minutes approved as presented. Item number three is public hearing for consent agenda for plats. There are two. I'll read both of them together, and we'll have discussion, and there'll be one public hearing. If anyone wishes to speak on either subject, they can come at that time. 3A is the final plat of Austin Ranch West. It is lots 3R, 6 through 9, and 10X. It's block B. It is a 18.807 acre tract. It's zoned light industrial, L1. It's located on the southwest corner of Plano Parkway and Tittle Drive, being a replat of Austin Ranch West edition, lot 3, block B. Item 3B is the final plat of Delancey edition, Lots 1A and 1B, it's Block A, it is a 4.224 acre tract, it is Zone Light Industrial, L1, it's located on the north side of College Street, it is between Keeley Avenue and Railroad Street, it's being a replat of Delancey Edition, Lot 1, Block A. Staff? Richard? Good evening, Chairman Davis and members of the Commission. Uh, before you this evening, um, the two plats before you this evening um, have been reviewed by staff, and uh, staff has determined that all minimum standards of the general development uh, ordinance have been met. Staff recommends approval as submitted. Thank you. Commissioners, questions? No. Okay, at this time we'll open up the public hearing on item uh, 3A and 3B, Austin Ranch and Delancey Edition. If there's anyone in the audience that wishes to speak, uh, please come forward, sign in, and state your name. All right, having no one come forward, the public hearing is now <coughs> closed. Uh, commissioners, comments, concerns, comments? If not, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Kristen to approve. Second. Seconded by Alvin. Those in favor, signify aye. 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 Opposed with a nay. Okay, motion carries unanimously. Um, item four is the regular hearing for plats. It's preliminary plat of Castle Hills, phase nine, section A. It's a residential subdivision with 177 residential lots and 15 common areas. It's on a 34.367 acre tract of land. It's a state townhouse ETH zoning. It's located on the northeast corner of Hebron Parkway and Standridge Drive with two associated variances. Jeff? Good evening, Commissioners. Um, the uh, plat before you is a preliminary plat. Uh, the uh, subject property will be used for single family uh, residential development. Uh, this property, uh, just so you know, is recently uh, being annexed into the uh, extraterritorial jurisdiction of uh, what we call Castle Hills. <coughs> uh, and that was done in April 20th, 2015. Uh, there are two variances associated with the preliminary plat. Uh, one is a reduced right-of-way. Uh, it'll have a 41-foot right-of-way with six-foot uh, sidewalk and utility easements. And the second variance is to waive the alley requirement. Uh, both of these variances are common variances that we've approved um, on past plats for Castle Hills. Uh, some of the some of them that we cited in the write-up is Castle Hills Golf Course Villas phases one, two, and three had both of these variances associated with them. Um, talk a little bit more about the street variance, street right-of-way variance. We normally require a 50-foot right-of-way for our residential streets with a 31-foot uh, wide street, um, and we we would have four-foot sidewalks on both sides of the street. Um, and this, the only difference is uh, 
we are going to reduce it down to a 44, 41 foot right of way uh, and have uh, the sidewalks in an easement instead of the right of way. Uh, so they will still have a 31 foot width like, like it should, like it requires. And the, uh, so the six foot sidewalk utility easements would contain the sidewalks and the water meters, sanitary sewer cleanouts, and franchise utilities. Um, and on the second variance, the alley waiver, uh, this is a uh, common variance for this area. Um, so the, in the 96 agreement, which is the um, agreement we have for the extraterritorial jurisdiction, uh, <coughs> subdivisions uh, where the lots or average over 10,000 square feet have an automatic, um, uh, there's not a requirement for, for alleys. This subdivision does not meet that requirement, so that's why it's a variance before you. Uh, the lots do range in size from 5,900 square feet to uh, the largest was 12,610 square feet. Um, I guess the main advantage that they're uh, that we're in support of is that this furniture does uh, provide larger uh, backyards uh, for each unit. Uh, so we recommend approval on both of these variances. <coughs> um, so we recommend that uh, City Council or the should say. PNC uh, approve the uh, preliminary plat or recommend approval and the variances set forth. Okay. I have a question yeah. um, just for my own um, just general knowledge. What, what difference does it make with the sidewalk being in the right of way versus an easement? It's, it's just. Uh, in our regular general development ordinance or our agreement with them, um, it is re uh, shown and required to be in the right of way. It's the normal placement of that sidewalk. It's normally placed one feet, one foot from the property line <coughs> in the city right of way. Is the normal location of that public sidewalk. But for utility placement or anything like that, there's no issue. Okay. We we it's haven't had any problems with. Um, uh, I think we've. You know, coordinate this with utility companies, franchise utilities. We have not had any problems uh, to date uh, with this type of easement on these other subdivisions we've approved so it on. So, does that mean that the easement is set back a little further from the street? Is that why it's not in the right of way? No, the the uh, six foot easement is adjacent to the right of way. Here's a, a little cross section. <coughs> So the uh, so the 41 foot right of ways shown here, um, and then there's a six foot sidewalk utility easement adjacent to the right of way on both sides. Okay. And this is the um, similar lo layout that we approved uh, on these other uh, subdivisions I cited, the Castle Hills Villas phases one, two, and three. So it will, it will still be maintained as if it's in the city right away? That is correct. That's, that's the purpose of the easement. It gives us, uh, it gives the authority to uh, the city, or in this case the district for now, uh, to maintain the sidewalk. I have a question on the access. Just looking at this, I don't know if I'm looking at it correctly or not, but... It, it looks like there's just the one entrance exit there on Hebron and then one on the side of the subdivision onto Stanbridge. Is that it? Am I saying uh, that Yes, that's the only access to uh, the existing uh, right-of-ways. Is that sufficient? Yes, it is. We, and we, uh, uh, we re require a minimum two points of access for a subdivision of the size that meets uh, uh, you know, from an emergency standpoint, uh, Fire Marshal has reviewed this and has no problems uh, right. with the layout and the separation of the um, street connections to the uh, existing streets. Thanks, Jeff. Will there be parking on both sides of the street? Because I kind of on what is question, what I'm curious about, we have this problem in older areas where the fire trucks can get through if there are vehicles on yeah, both sides. We, 
Um, the 31 foot requirement, um, this is a, um, um, this is the same street width we've used throughout uh, Castle Hills, okay. uh, even with a front entry access. Um, it is certainly, uh, you know, if you park on both sides of the road, uh, it's really, I mean, it, there, there is still room to get the emergency vehicle through there. Okay. Um, Thank you. We haven't heard problems with, uh, uh, I guess, nothing's come up from our fire department or uh, the Denton County Fire Marshal also has some jurisdiction here. We haven't heard any issues with them as well. I just had a comment about that. A, a standard parking space is nine feet wide. So if you take 18 feet out of that 31 feet, that yeah. leaves you with what? 15 yeah. feet for a fire truck um, to get through there? Did I do my I math guess right? 13. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 13 feet. Yeah, you would have 13 so feet, which is a normal driving a normal driving lane um, like on a is 12 feet you know, like on a street uh, street lane so it'd be slightly wider than a, a street lane but of course you know you, it'll it'll feel tight though obviously we've all experienced that driving through neighborhoods all right thank you Jess thanks this time we'll open up the public hearing. Anyone that wishes to comment, uh, please come forward, state your name, and sign in. All right, having no one come forward, the public hearing is now closed. Uh, Commissioner, discussion, comments? Okay. May I have a motion? Move to approve. Move. Moved to approve by Brandon, <coughs> seconded by Mary Ellen. Those in favor signify aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this item will be uh, considered by the City Council on uh, September the 14th, 2015 for uh, a final vote. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item is uh, item five. It's a public hearing for a special use permit. This is consideration of an amendment to a special use permit request for the drive-in theater on 34.529 acre tract. It's part of the SM Hayden survey. It's abstract number 537. It is on light industrial, located on the southeast corner of Midway Road and Holford's Prairie Road as requested by Coyote Theater, LLC. This is case number SUP 2015-0808. Richard? Thank you, Chairman Davis. The item before you tonight is an amendment to the existing SUP for the theater. There's two primary changes, as you can see on the illustration. Uh, the original SUP was approved for five screens, and the applicant is wishing to add a sixth screen. The, um, the other change is the location of the main entry drive. As you can see on the illustration, it's located uh, toward the, the middle of the site off of Midway Road. It was previously located on the western edge of their property. Uh, the applicant is present tonight to give you additional details, and staff uh, is available to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, questions before we open the public hearing? I have one. Um, I have an understanding. I think I read that um, Coyote does normally use six screens each time they open one of the drive-ins and that they did so, I believe, in Fort Worth, if I'm not mistaken. My question is just simply why, why did not, why do you did not go ahead and, and put in for six screens initially so what, that this is necessary to do this today? Was there additional land acquired or? If you look closely at the rendering, you'll see there's a uh, um, kind of a, it looks like a carve out of where the floodplain line comes in. We discovered um, once we uh, dug into the details with the engineer that that had already been previously sort of 
approved to be taken out of the floodplain and that it would be fairly simple and inexpensive to have it removed as opposed to the normal process. Can't give you all the exact details. And once we discovered that we could reclaim that land, it actually opened up not only the land that's in the floodplain or it's actually out of the floodplain, but used to be in the floodplain. It also opened up this big chunk of land that fronts on Col Holford's Prairie, right there, making it usable. And we would have uh, liked to have made the screen a little bit larger actually, but we found out since we started this process that we need to save some of that area in the back as a detention pond. So we actually didn't get to reclaim all of the property we wanted to, but it opened it up and made it uh, uh, more feasible for us to add the six screen. That answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. I didn't hear what you'd said right in the beginning about we opened the first one. Um, I had, I think I read somewhere that when you normal that the company normally own, opens a drive-in that they normally open with six screens. No, no, that no? actually the one in Fort Worth that we opened we opened with three. Oh, okay. And in May we added a fourth screen. Okay, I misunderstood yeah. that. Yeah. So when we first opened Fort Worth we opened it with three. Okay. But looking at the um, results of other theaters across the country, some of the best. Uh, the ones that do the most business have more screens, which I guess is sort of true in the indoor business as well. Yeah. You might okay. ask why we didn't start with that idea, but we started <clears throat> slowly because we're bringing back something that is, you know, as you know, kind of was lost and gone forever and now coming back. My generation. <laughs> What's that? My generation. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for answering. Sure. I have a question. Um, with the additional theater, um, have you updated your traffic pro projections for what additional traffic that would cause and evaluated your, your entrance to <coughs> make sure that that's not a problem? What did we do about that, Jeff? Did we talk about that? Can I ask you a question? Uh, the traffic study was not updated. Um, I think the the results of the initial study with the five screens um, was I think it, it proved that the stacking and the entrance um, it really had no impacts on the surrounding streets intersections um, the addition of the six screen um, was is really small it's a small area a small parking area for that screen uh, so we chose not to have them update the traffic impact analysis for it. Okay. We sold out the, the theater in Fort Worth. You might like this or you might not like this. It depends on where you, what side of the <laughs> aisle you're on. Uh, we only sold out three times all summer. One of those was 4th four, of July. So the actual chance that you're going to reach peak and then actually use those 117 spaces is very, very slim. I mean, I hope we do a lot, but uh, you may on the average have more, but you'll never have like over a bigger night than what we probably would have had uh, had we not even added the, the screen except for maybe once or twice a year. So should not impact it very much if you're concerned. And I think there was a lot of, uh, if I remember the, traffic study seemed to think that it would be we were well within the bandwidth of what the area could handle okay and so the move of the entrance was that done to line up with a left turn or a median opening or we, so we kind didn't of the movements the same no the reason we did that um <coughs> was the more we dug into it oh sorry um the more we dug into it, you can see right here where these two roads come together, Midway and Holford's Prairie. It would have, it's pretty short distance from there to where the entrance would have been. And we were really concerned that that could back up. And we thought if we moved it down, we could also add a deceleration lane, which would help cars queue. And it does also help with the left turn a little bit, but we also widened it so we can have more cars and we don't think it's going to cause any backup on the road at all, especially if we add the deceleration lane. Okay. 
All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you all. Appreciate that. We're excited about it. We had our biggest summer ever. So uh, it seems like now it's our third summer. People are still finding out about the drive-in, and hopefully we'll continue get more information than you want. Okay. At this time, we'll open up the public hearing. If there's anybody that wishes to come forward and speak, um, please come forward, sign in, and state your name. All right, having no one come forward, the public hearing is now closed. Commissioners, comments, concerns? I look forward to the drive and, um, you know, too. have an entertainment venue in Louisville. I think it'll be great. I actually wanted to ask, when is the target open date? Yes, please. I think uh, our plan is to be open. We got all of our numbers back from the contractor and the dates for April 1st. Okay. So we were hoping to be open for March 1st, spring break, but uh, it looks like April 1st, so just in time to get everything up and running for the summer season. Okay. And hopefully it won't rain 26 days in May <laughs> like it did this year. <laughs> that, that put a little dampener on it, yeah. but luckily the first weekend of the summer was Avengers, and we did a lot of business that weekend. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? If not, uh, may I have a motion, please? Move to approve. Second. Okay, moved by Stephen to approve or recommend for approval. Seconded by Brandon. Those in favor signify aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion carries unanimously. Um, this item uh, will be considered by the City Council, who will also hold a public hearing on September 14th, 2015. Thank you, sir. Okay, the last item is adjournment. May I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn by Brandon. Second. Second is by Kristen. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> uh, meeting adjourned. I didn't think we'd have to ask.